Hey, what's up guys? It's Seth from Workbench, and this week we're gonna take a look at creating procedural pipes inside of Cinema 4D. Today we're gonna take a look at creating this animation with procedural splines. Let's jump into it. So to start off with, I'm gonna create one of the tubes. The tubes are based off of straight lines, and then I'm using a CV chamfer that's one of the extensions from Cineversity. It's in the CV splines to objects. And what CV chamfer does is it gives you roundings or straights on your corners. So for example, here it is with a 30 degree radius on the corners. And then also it has this flat feature, which is useful if you were creating, let's say like circuit boards or something like that. But for our purposes, we're gonna keep it rounded. Then I'm just gonna stick that inside of a sweep with a circle. So that creates our tube. And then to create the tube collars that you would normally find like on the corners of cast iron piping or whatever, uh, I'm going to use a cloner. So I started off by creating an extrude with the same circle that I used on this. And then I stuck that inside of a cloner. I set the cloner to object and then I fed the CV chamfer into the object tab and I set the distribution to vertex. So by default, the CV chamfer gives a vertex right before each bend. So that's it. Now, if you wanted to add some thickness to these little collars, you can just go in here and grab the cloth surface and stick it in there. And there you go. So now if you look, you have these nice collars and it's completely procedural. So let's say you wanted rounder corners for some reason, you could create the rims and all of the collars stay in place. Now the cool thing about this setup too is if you let's say wanted to animate like we did in our animation something going down the tube you can do that really simply. Because this is based procedurally you can take let's say uh, an object 10 and then grab a cloner take that object in there set this to object and then we're going to again use this cv chamfer in here uh, i'm going to temporarily hide the sweep so you can see it so here's our object here instead of vertex like we used before we're going to use count and i'm going to let's just use four for now and i'm going to kind of pack them together and then i'm just going to add a rate to it. So let's say 10 for it. And I have it set to loop. So now if I hit play, you can see it's already animated. The one thing you'll note is when you hit play here, you see that it slows down in the corners and speeds up in the straights. And that's because the way this spline is set up is set to adaptive. So it's just going to give you a dot where you actually put a point. So to get around that, you can set this to natural or uniform, and that'll get you more of a even speed throughout the whole spline. But now what's happening is that we, they're two together because it was based on the amount of points you had before. So you got to go back into your cloner and change your end here so that you have a little more space in between. So now if I hit play, you can see it's nice and even. Now the cool thing about this is because it's rate, you can actually just make it faster. And it'll just loop infinitely. Now that we've created the setup for the pipes, let's go in and do the slides and the conveyor belt. So just real quickly, I'm gonna play this back so you can actually see what's actually happening here. So you can see we got a little thing coming down, boom, and it flies, and it just continues forever. So let me show you how this is built. So I built this off of a helix, and then I am using an arc to create the shape in a sweep, and then I added a cloth surface to give it thickness. Pretty simple. The conveyor here, this one's a plane with a spline wrap, and inside the spline wrap, I'm using the CV chamfer here. And this is just the spline is 90 degrees here, straight, 90 degrees here, straight, and 90 degrees. 
So I'm going to turn this off. You can see that's what it looks like. And then with CV chamfer, it's rounded. So that's how I built that belt there. And then this tube is built exactly the same way as this one is. For animating this, I'm using a spline path. And because I built this with splines, I already have a path for this to go down. And it doesn't matter that they're separate objects because what I did was I animated one till I basically got to the end here. And then in one frame, I switched from the helix to this next chamfer here. So there's our CV chamfer two, which is this one. And that one rolls across this thing here. And the one, one other thing I did, I should mention, is that inside here, this is a null object. Inside my null object, I have another null object and I have my cube. And the reason I did that is that that way I can animate the cube and still have it linked to the spline. So for example, here I'm animating the Y value so that it doesn't go through the belt when it switches to the next spline. And also I'm animating the rotation so that it feels like it kind of flips onto the belt. And then I did the same thing here. This is a separate spline right there. So I animated down this spline until I got to about here. And within one frame, switch to the next spline, and then it continues down this spline. Now we can move on to creating the loop. So as you can see, this animation infinitely loops. And how I accomplished that was I started out by creating my main one, which is this one here. I started it at like somewhere in here. I set all my animations up and then I positioned this first one and I animated my camera. Then I went to about 40 or so, took my animation and grouped them all together, made a duplicate of it, and then pasted it underneath the camera went to my end frame here and pulled it out from underneath the camera so that it would end up exactly the same place as where it started. And then I did the same thing going the other direction, made a duplicate in the center, parented it to the camera, moved to the frame zero, took it off the camera and voila. So if you look, my first frame zero and my last frame are exactly the same. This was brought to you by Element Supply Company, of which I am a partner. Element Supply offers battle-tested, fairly priced tools to save artists time so they can focus on what they want to make instead of setting it up. So check it out at elementsupply.co. All right, that's it for this week. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any comments or questions, leave in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, go to workbench.tv forward slash support. I'm Sev, and we'll catch you later. Bye.